Hello everyone, my name's Tom. I'm a fine art graduate from Norwich University of the Arts and now I work as part of the recruitment team here. This is our portfolio advice. Let's get stuck in. Before we go into the details of communication around portfolios, I just want to highlight that not all of our courses require a portfolio for this year's entry. So our acting course, creative computing, creative technology, fashion communication and promotion, fashion marketing and business and games development courses will not require a portfolio for this year's entry. However, they do have other entry criteria that we'll be in touch with you about. All of the other courses do require a portfolio. So what is a portfolio? <clears throat> a portfolio is effectively a shop window into your personal practice. It's our chance to get an idea of what makes you tick as a creative individual and it consists of these three things. Your making skills. This is maybe the most obvious area. This could be your drawing, painting, printmaking, photography, film, animation, installation. However you like to make, these types of skills are really important for us to see. But the next two things are maybe less obvious. We're really keen to see your ideation, your ideas development, how you've initially started with a brief or thought or idea and develop that through to a final outcome. We want to see the whole journey. That's really important to us. And we're also really interested to see the influences on your work as well. Those artists, designers, filmmakers, architects, poets, landscapes, environments, political movements, Anything or anyone that's inspired you, we want to see how that's made a difference to your journey. So we really um, would love it if you show a lot of that process as well as the outcomes. Show it your way. Now, if you apply to us, you will have the option of submitting a digital portfolio to us initially, and that could be it. Or it might be that you want to submit a digital portfolio and catch up with us in an online context as well. That's the second option. And the third option is for you to um, submit a physical or digital portfolio and meet us on campus as well to have a portfolio review. Now, it might be useful for you to have a look at some of our digital portfolio examples. On screen now is a QR code that just links you through to a range of different portfolio examples that you might want to explore to see how that might influence the way you want to display your work digitally, if that's of interest to you. Now, <clears throat> typically, it might be that you want to present your work in a Google Slides presentation, a PowerPoint presentation, a PDF interactive file. That's absolutely fine. Make sure you check your settings to make sure that we can access it, though. You might want to use a host site, perhaps ArtStation or um, Vimeo might be of interest to you for animation, games, film students, or it might be that you want to use something like um, Pinterest or Instagram. If you do go down that route, make sure you separate out your personal life from your creative practice. <clears throat> and it might be that you want to use your own um, personalised blog or website. That can be a great thing to do, but make sure you test those out to make sure that they're easy and intuitive to navigate. Typically in the past, students have used the likes of Wix.com, um, Behance, GoGoDaddy. There's a host of different free website builders that are out there for you to check out. It might be, though, that you want to present your work in a physical format. Typically, these have been through folders. Folders range in size between A4, which is quite small, up to A1, which is pretty massive. Generally, A2 and A3 are a lot more manageable and more affordable as well. And it might be that you present your work in plastic wallets or sleeves, or it might be that you mount your work onto boards. Either way is absolutely fine. It might be that you want to use something that's a little bit more interactive, though. So um, a solander or archive box. Um, th these are often really useful for interior design, fashion, textile students to allow the viewer to get that little bit more up close and personal. And an intuitive design is ultimately an object that ties in with the work. So, for example, this piece of packaging design by Olivia could be used as the, the transportational device for the portfolio itself. And the, the nature of the work in there might be about packaging design, logos, branding. It could be about elements of illustration and typography design. So it just needs to make sure that if you go down that route, that it complements the nature of the work that you want to show. <clears throat> so some basic qualities of the portfolio. Please put your name on your portfolio. We look at thousands every year. So it really helps us to know whose work we're looking at. In terms of quantity, we recommend 12 to 15 pages or slides. 
It needs to be course relevant as well. So make sure that the nature of the work ties in with that subject you're interested in. We have a list on our website of the typical um, types of work you might want to include for each subject. So do have a look at that if you're unsure. We love to um, see your work with clarity. So please use neutral backdrops, blacks, whites, greys, nothing that's going to visually bombard us in any way. We generally recommend one to three images per page for clear communication. Avoid repetition. If you include lots and lots and lots of the same type of work, it can get a little bit kind of samey to look at. So make sure you show us something fresh with each page. We generally recommend um, four um, prints in a series, but if it's a series of photographs that tell a story, maybe six to eight in a sequence. Some more basic qualities. Photography skills are really crucial for capturing your work. If you can't bring your work in, then maybe photograph it at its best, in its ideal environment or location, perhaps in the photography studio, maybe being worn by the appropriate um, model if it's a, a garment of some kind. Perhaps photograph the front, the back, the side if it's a 3D piece of work and highlight intricate details that could otherwise go overlooked. Make sure they're quality images, that they're not cropped inappropriately or that they're not too pixelated unless that's meant to be intentional. And any labelling should be neat, discreet and a secondary encounter to the work. Ideally, it should be the, the maybe the second or third thing we see after the work itself. In terms of storytelling, think about your portfolio as your own story. Maybe start with something really interesting and end on something provocative. Maybe compartmentalise your projects, perhaps even include a contents page. Make sure you curate it and lay it out in such a way that it's a really interesting page turner. And <clears throat> think about those sketchbooks. If you're coming to us in person, you could bring in a few sketchbooks and highlight significant pages within there. However, if you're thinking about doing a digital submission, you might want to photograph pages of a physical um, sketchbook or, or scan them in or do some screen grabs if you have your journals online and pop those significant parts of your learning process into the portfolio. Like I mentioned before, the perspective, well, the perspective, the portfolio is a, an assemblage of final outcomes, but also of the influences on your work as well as your ideas development and the influences and ideas development are usually through, shown through sketchbooks. We love it when you show off and there's a, a bunch of different ways you can do this. It might be through including unique responses. So it might be that you um, look at different artists and designers to other people when you get set a brief. It might be that you lay your portfolio out differently. It might be that you make with different techniques and processes. Try to make yourself seem different to other people in your class. We love it when you include personal projects, things you're doing outside of school or college. This might be something like um, an internship or a work placement or a competition, or it might be that you're doing a commission piece. It might be that you just like to spend the evenings making your own comic book. Well, we love to see that type of thing as well. And if you can evidence creative risk taking, this is really valuable for us because it shows us that you're willing to, to push the bar, that you're not just doing what's been done before, you're wanting to innovate and not just imitate. So please include elements of creative risk taking, whether that's trying a new material or resource or doing some kind of collaboration project, we'd love to see it. And here's our checklist. So have you shown the process? A lot of students are very good at showing final outcomes, but we want to see that journey and the influences as well. Ask for feedback. When you've put your portfolio together and you're happy with its order and its layout, get someone that you trust to have a look at it as well. They'll be able to make suggestions as to whether you should include a bit more or take a bit of work out. In terms of submitting, the sooner the better. Generally, if you hit the 31st of January deadline, that will unlock a lot of the rest of the process to you of applying to university. So it can just put your mind at ease to get your application in sooner rather than later. <clears throat> Check your work before each submission. Make sure that it's appropriate to that subject you're applying for, because if you're applying for more than one subject, the nature of the work might be slightly different. So just make sure that that's not an issue for you. Practice your pitch. If you do choose to either meet us online or meet us in person, you have the chance to talk about your work for around three to four minutes. So it's worth practicing that narrative that you want to pull out of the portfolio. 
And also, it's you at your best. When you've got everything together and you're happy with its order and layout, ask yourself that question. Is this the best of me at this moment? And if the answer to this question is yes, then you're in a really good place to submit your portfolio. Other than that, looking at some finer details, do have a look at our course pages. Now our course pages, as I mentioned before, have a list of the typical types of work that you might want to include for each subject. Have a look at those portfolio examples that I mentioned previously to get a sense of the different presentation formats that you might want to adopt for your work. And other than that, feel free to contact us at student.recruitment at norwichuni.ac.uk if you have any questions around your portfolio or you're just unsure of the nature of your work and whether it ties in with the subject or anything else, please do get in touch with us. And that's it. Thank you so much for your time and good luck with your application.